Have you been looking for a way to stay focused on your goals and grow your MSP? Accountability groups from Rocket MSP can help. We offer weekly accountability sessions that meet online with a group of your peers. Your success begins with accountability. Go to www.rocketmsp.io to join your accountability group today. Do you want to move on to the next one? Yes, sir. So I'm I'm not uh, I'm not ready to agree to anything right now. I'll get back to you. Yeah, I'm not ready to agree to anything. Okay, Um, so this to me is uh, there's been a mistake made by the salesperson because the timeframes haven't been outlined at the beginning of the discussion. A sale is a project. A sale is a project, and um, most people don't do that they blindly walk into a meeting they blindly you know ask a few questions maybe client says what they want maybe and everybody walks away and nothing happens i treat every sale like a project and so the first kind of opening discussion would be um who are you what do you do why are we talking i just want to listen i just that's it tell me what tell me what's going on and then I would say something along the lines of, um, would you mind if I spend a minute or two just talking about what we do, how we help, and what our process is? And so what I'm what I'm framing at this point in time is I'm not walking in here um, blind. I've had many discussions like this. I'm a specialist in my field, and there's a process to follow. And so I talk about, you know, where where But MSP, what that means is that we take full responsibility and accountability for everything that happens in your IT environment. There is a there's a series of milestones that we need to go through. But before we get to that, I wanted to let you know that the average time from the moment we meet a prospect to the time that they onboard with us is 30 days, right? So what I'm doing is I'm setting the terms of this pre-sales engagement. I'm not going to spend more than 30 days on this is what I'm sharing. I'm not going to spend more than 30 days. I'm not going to hassle you. I'm not going to nag you. I'm not going to keep following up to find out where you're at. It's 30 days. And the first week is some discussions about your needs. The second week is an audit or a net, what did you call it? A network colonoscopy, a network enema. (laughs) The second week is a a network enema. The third week is um, agreement, agreement, but I'm going to send you a a draft copy of the agreement up front up front because what we find is that is the part that takes the longest and that is the part where the objections occur and so we want to get all of that out on the table now there's no point me talking to you for the next month and then you get the agreement and you're like I don't agree with the terms and so I'm going to send that to you up front and then the last part is the signing ceremony and then we onboard you and away we go right and so I've set the terms now does it always adhere to 30 days of course not of course not but it gives us key milestones and exit points. And so what's happening immediately after that is after I've had that conversation, the clock is ticking and I'm saying to them, hey, guys, we've only got about 15 days left and we've still got to hit these two items. Do you need to delay? Should we pause? Should we suspend? Should we stop? I need to know because this is basically internally what we're sharing is this is a project and I'm not going to waste a lot of time on you because I've got other prospects. And why is that? It's because I'm the alpha, not the mark. I'm the specialist, not the other way around, right? When you go to the surgeon, they say, listen, um, my next appointment is in six months and I do surgeries on Tuesdays and this is the surgery schedule, the receptionist, and the receptionist will take you through that kind of thing, right? That's the alpha. That's what surgeons do. You need to put yourself in that position. So going back to this objection, Steve, is um, I'm not ready to to agree to anything right now. I'll get back to you. Well, it's like, well, first, thank you. But hopefully they've given you that answer within that time frame that you outlined, right? And then good. That's actually an awesome objection because like, thank you. Now, when would you like us to restart this process? You sound busy. You sound like you're not ready to buy, you're not ready to work with us just yet. When would you like to commence? And they might, like, oh, um, actually, I think give us a call back in July. Perfect. I'll call you in July. Make a note in your diary. Don't follow them up again until July. 
when you do that, mm. when when you do that, and you say, you know, when when's a better time for us to restart this process? Yeah. What what is the likelihood that when you reach back out to them in July, that they yeah. didn't already get pressured into buying something from someone else? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think I think first of all, I don't waste a lot of time thinking about things like that. Um, I don't waste a lot of energy thinking about that. I, I don't know a lot do, and I know I did. I know I wasted about ten years of my life thinking and worrying about other other people and what they're doing and what they're thinking and what they're buying. I don't. I move on. I, I get my time back. We talked about this on the last episode. I go back and spend more time with my family. I don't waste time on use like prospects that aren't going anywhere. If they, somebody if somebody else pressured them, good on them. Great. Now, what's pressure? We talked before. Keep your campaigns going. Keep your emails going out. Keep your you know keep your keep your information, your thought leadership. Send them an article. Send them a book. Invite them to an event. Organize a lunch. Of course, all of that stuff is is still there. You keep doing those things, but what you're saying is the sales process has been suspended because you're not ready, right? Keep keep the keep the 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 flow going. Of course, keep keep out there, and something will land. Has been my experience. By the way, your competition is lazy, so um, the fact that you're just in there and you know that you've got some content going out and that you're reminding them of who you are and you're, you're touching base on LinkedIn and saying happy birthday or congratulations on your latest article or whatever it might be. Most MSPs are too lazy to do that. And so if you're doing that, you've got a much higher probability of converting the sale. So I just want to recap. You you basically said that when when you when you sit down with, with a company and you start this 30-day process, one of the Ooh. first things you are doing is is just sliding across the table. Here's here's my contract. I don't need you to well, sign it I- right now. I just want you to have it so that way you or your attorney can review it because I find that, mm. that most of the time uh, th- this is where the questions lie mm. or, or how I think um, showing uh, uh, there'll be sales, sales um, uh, thought leaders out there that'll say, bring your contract to the, to the meeting and blah. <laughs> okay. I look, I don't, I don't, I think that's a little aggressive. I think what you're saying is I am going to send you after this meeting, I'm going to send you, a draft agreement and I would like you to review it up front. I'd like, in fact, I'd like you to just take 10 minutes to just quickly scan it, have a look and let me know if there's anything jumps out right away because if we get too far down the road and you don't agree with how we do things on that basis, then we've just wasted a month of one another's time. So I want you, basically what I'm saying is I want your objections early. I want them and we're going to talk about some of those. There's more of those objections further down. Yeah. I've never been, but I've never been so bold to as, as to show up at a new prospect with a contract. I know a lot of people say that you know that's the that's the alpha play that you should make. I I don't think so. I think it's going to think that's a little bit threatening. Um, I think the idea is to say I've got my ducks in a row. I do this. We do this every day. We work with a lot of businesses like yours. We know what we're doing. This is the time frame, and this is where it stalls. And so we want to we want to get the, the the bits that stall. We want to get them out of the way right now, right? Let's get it done ASAP. I like that a lot. You're doing them a favor, and they're doing you a favor. It's 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 you know nobody wants to waste time with with salespeople. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to. They either they want to know that it's going to work or it's not going to work. They want to know the price early. You want to get your price in there as early as possible. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs. It's a qualifier. If you're sitting down and you're like, I'm uh, 200 bucks an endpoint and this is why, and they just walk you to the door, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, like thanks for saving me the stress and the worry and the, and the, and the you know, I'm already buying my new car kind of thing, thinking I'm going to get this deal closed. And that, like, I want them to know, I want to know up front that they can't afford me. If you can't afford me, see you later. We had a MSP come come through as a lead in the last couple of days and He's like, I can only afford, you know, for 24-7 outsourced services, you know, hundreds of things. I can only afford 200 bucks. It was like, thank you. Thank you for your time. We can't do it. So um, I don't want to waste any more time prospecting you and trying to convince you because your budget's just too low for, for what your expectations are. It can't be done. And that's that. 
And I, and I think for what you do with, especially with benchmark, you know, people just probably assume that, Oh, cool. It's, it's outsourcing to the Philippines. It's, it's what, like 30 cents an hour, right? It's a third world country. Yeah. They don't, they well, don't realize that the yeah. Philippines is like, isn't it like the tech hub of Southeast Asia? Yeah. Well, I think what people, uh, actually, I wouldn't say that happens very often, Steve. It, it probably did in the early stages of benchmark because we were kind of a pioneer at this model. You know, it's outsourced help desk, it's 24 seven and it's, it's fractional, meaning you just pay for what you consume. And it's month to month. I mean, no one, no one's doing that, right? Um, I still think we're the most economical provider in the market. In fact, I, in fact, I know we are the most economical provider in the market, and we don't get a lot of that. But I think people don't realise what they're buying is a system that works. You know, you're not buying a, a, an employee that sits there and just, you know, you've got to direct them all day and send them tickets for what did you say, thirty cents an hour? Oh, that'd be nice, but. Um, um, but, but like they're buying a system where that's all managed, maintained. It's, it's, you know, there's redundancy in place. There's training in place. There's, there's software systems in place. There's all, it's a package and that package delivers a result. And that result is saves you 50% on what otherwise would be your staffing costs. And it delivers more margin to your business. Right. And so what most people get most of that, but some people now and then come stumbling in and they're like, I don't understand. Why is it why is it so expensive? And it's like, have you have you really thought about what's involved to have warm bodies at the other end of the line at two o'clock in the morning fixing your your clients' computers? Right? There's a bit there's a bit more to it than 30 cents an hour. Yeah. We'll get we'll get into the benchmark objections later. We can we can talk about that if you like. Yeah. All right, so we've been we've been talking about some sales objections. Uh, you mentioned that you know there's there's some high costs to to putting warm bodies and chairs at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, something yeah. that we didn't really talk much about is it's what uh, eight thirty now for you? Yeah, in the good. morning tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah. So James, can you tell me what is Dogecoin now at, and should I sell? It's just dropped to five cents. Oh, you think no. you need to sell, sell, sell right now. All right, guys, you heard yeah. that. Everyone needs to sell their Dogecoin. <laughs> Is that insider trading because I'm in the future and I'm able to tell you what Dogecoin's going for? I don't I don't know how that works. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we're fine. It's probably fine. All right. I uh, you know, the sad thing enough, is there might be somebody that believes us. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It just jumped up to a million. It's a million bucks. Oh, now. boy. You shouldn't have sold it. <laughs> yeah, a million. It's a million um, monopoly bucks. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So some people don't understand what cryptocurrency is actually used for. So it feels. Well, like I didn't monopoly. know what. De- I feel stupid because I. I just. I've told you this before. I've been on your show many times now. I'm obsessed with benchmark. Like I just. I just live and breathe benchmark. It's all I do. It's all I do every day. I didn't know what Dogecoin was. I, I had no idea. And when you showed me, I said, "Oh, doggy coin." <laughs> like I, I know, I know nothing but my like I, I, I obsess over every little intricate part of Benchmark three sixty five and our partners. It's all I do, and then and then when I'm not doing that, I obsess over my my little family and and our lives here, and that's it, that's it. I'm stupid about everything else. I don't know anything about anything else at all. Yeah. All right, so let's let's go back into these sales objections. Now you said oh. uh, if if somebody if somebody's budget's like way super low, obviously you're going to walk away. Yeah. But if somebody yeah. says I don't have budget for this, yeah, something else is going to happen, uh, right? Well, yeah. So this comes down to size. So people that use words like I don't have budget for this are usually larger. I I would say more mature business. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't hear this from like Sally, the 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 you know financial planner, you right. know one one woman operator. I don't hear that. I just hear I can't afford it or I can't. And so that's 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 a different objection. We'll get into that. Um, but I don't have budget for this. Is usually from a slightly bigger organisation. You might not be dealing with the owner. You might be dealing with a manager. And so the natural question would be, Steve, what do you think? Well, who is in charge of the budget? 
I, I would say, how do budgets work? Yeah. So it, help, help. Just help me understand a bit about your organisation because we've only met today, or we maybe you know I've heard this from large large clients of our MSP, um, like even today, right? I said well, I don't have budget for this. It's like just walk me through how the budget works and what have you budgeted for? Like what 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 is the budget? Just call it call it call it point blank. I mean, if they can't answer that question, then it was a stupid statement to make in the first place. They should have just said I don't want to buy or I don't want to spend any money. In which case, thank you, goodbye, appreciate your time. I'm going, I'm going back to my pursuits. Um, but saying I don't have budget for this is like, when does the budget like when does the budget start? Who to your point, who is in charge of the budget and what does the budget look like? And let let me see how we can work together on that. I like that. Yeah. Send me some references. Oh, it's my favorite. This is one of my favorites, because everyone um craps themselves when a client asks this, a prospect asks this, right? Because it's like, oh, I want to send John, but they just had a just had a server outage last week. I don't want to refer him. And I was going to refer Sally, but, you know, she uh, she's thinking about changing providers. She's mentioned a few times, you know. So most people flip out when uh, prospect, or, or we don't have any, is, a, is another one. We have any references uh, when you when you on the scene. Don't have any references just yet. That's a hard one. Um, what I would say is, oh, um, cool. I'd love to put you in touch with some of our very happy clients. What questions do you have for them so that I can put you in touch with the right person? Why do I ask that question? Why do I ask that question? Because it means there's something still in their mind that they don't trust me about. So it's what do you need? What do you need to know? What it, but these are valid questions. What is it that you'd like to know from them? And oh, I want to know how responsive you are. Well, okay, let me talk a little bit more about that. And I will put you in touch with somebody, but let me talk a little bit more about why we're the most responsive MSP in the market. It's because we use Benchmark 365. Anyway. Send me an email about what you offer. I'll follow up later. Send me an email about what you offer. I'll follow up later. So are you on a telephone call? I suspect that's what that's what he asked is about is about a telephone call. Right. Then. This is the same as send me a to me. This is the same objection as send me a proposal. It's the same objection. It's like I absolutely I'll get that right away. What, can you give me one or two things that you need to know? I've got what I would say is look, we're not a we're not a very salesy business. We don't have glossy brochures. We're we're a professional service provider. What what are some of the things that you'd like me to? convey in this email like what what would you like to know i can send you a bunch of crap but what a waste of time for you and me i I say that to people like i don't want to waste your time or my time what do you want in the email what is it that you're looking for and then that gets a question it's just questions 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 oh you're looking for that why are you looking for that and so you're keeping them on the line a little bit longer why are you looking for that why is that an issue what options have you explored who have you spoken to about this what have you tried? What haven't you tried, but you think you should try it, right? This, just keep asking questions, 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 questions. Then send the email if you have to. I don't think you'll need to. I don't think you'll need to send the email because <clears throat> after that, it's a confirmation. We spoke about all of these things on the phone anyway. So just to confirm, we spoke about X, Y, Z, and then here's the next step. The next one I see here is I want to buy a Dell computer or a Sonic wall firewall or whatever mm. application, mm. not the one that mm. you recommend. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, so I like, think my, I, I think my response is who's the expert here, me or you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you your response is question. <laughs> I don't know if you, I don't know if you're picking up the theme, but it's all about the question. So it's like, what, why, why do you think that that is the best product for your business? Right. So why, why do you think is that? Well, because my buddy uses Dell and he thinks they're the best and my cousin, you know, okay. And all right. And so um, what if I were to tell you that we have certified engineers that attend sales presentations, training courses, that we have reps that are locally based here, that we know everybody in HP or 
IBM or what I don't know, what are whatever, the yeah. hardware, Acer or whatever, that we have very close connections, that we get the best pricing, we get wholesale pricing of these products. But most importantly, we when something goes wrong, we have a direct channel to talk to somebody that can help solve that problem. So what if I were to tell you that, Mr. Customer? And if the customer then continues to demand, well, then say, well, we've, and we're going to get into the cake analogies now. We baked a cake. We've baked a cake based on 20 years of experience in this industry, industry relationships and training with XYZ vendor, number of certified employees in the company that work on those products, and we have baked a cake and a pricing model based around that. And what you're telling me is you want us to remove the sugar, and it's not going to be the same. And so, by the way, I'm I'm in sales, so so I want I want the deal. I can do that for you, but these are going to be the exceptions. It might be price. It might be that I actually need to raise our per endpoint price by fifty bucks because I have no relationship with this vendor, and every time something goes wrong, it's going to cost me money. Every single time we have an issue with one of your computers. I'm going to have to get a guy on the phone to India to try to figure this out and I can't do it, Uh, not unless I put fees up. Or I need to exclude it so that every time something goes wrong with that machine or that firewall or that widget, we need to charge a rate for that. I, I don't like that one, by the way, but that's an option that you can put in. Sure. Or or could we agree that on the next refresh and can we put that in the contract that on the next refresh we will put these devices in that meet these specifications and your next refresh is due this time next year. Could we agree on that? Let's just get the relationship started. And can we agree that we might have to have a conversation about this along the way if one of these machines fails? I like that. And my son is crazy. <laughs> I want to buy my own equipment. Uh, I just sure. I just want to have you come install it and manage it. Yep. I don't yeah, see a problem with that. Bit. Yeah. Um, I don't either, except that when they pick your brain, your time, your expertise to go and buy it and not, and you don't get anything as a result of that. Um, so this again comes down to, to um, the cake baking the ethos of your business. So this initial conversation that we've had with this prospect, we talk about how we've um, made these vendor relationships, that that we get three quotes from different wholesale providers, that we're happy to share our margin with you in case you're concerned about us, our price being more than the next guy. But, But it's very important that we're the ones that you come to when you need to acquire some technology. But if you come to us and you pick our brain and then you don't buy from us, then we need to put a fee structure in place to reflect that because you're actually taking professional advice from us, but you're not buying from us. And so it's about having that sort of upfront conversation around what's acceptable in this engagement, right? What is the what is the what is the right way to work together? What's the win-win? And that's win-lose. That's they win, you lose. Mm. They buy you don't get any money from it. They win, you lose. I can't do business like that. Well, right? and, and, and so, what I've done yeah. in that in that particular situation is, you know, I, I say to the to the client or prospect, that's not a problem. And if if you want to buy it, you know, through through Dell or Sonical <laughs> or Best Buy or wherever, that that's totally fine. Yeah. But just know yeah. that um, you know, I I will have to charge you for the installation. And if we, if you have a bunch of questions about it before you buy and you ask me, that's consulting and that's, that's billable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like, um, and you want it, you want it to go wrong. Like we've had, uh, I'm sure you've had this, they go and they buy, they go on Amazon and they're like, no, Steve, the one you quoted was a thousand bucks more and you're wrong and we're right. And then they get it and it's, that doesn't have enough RAM and, it's running Windows Home, and you know it doesn't have a it doesn't have a LAN port. There's all this crap, right? And yeah. like to me, I'm like, yes, yes, awesome. So I escalate that immediately to the the highest possible person that I can in that business, and I say we had a conversation about this at the start of our relationship. I understand that you're trying to save money. I get it. 
that this has caused three days of disruption to your business. This is going to cost a lot of money to rectify. Next time, um, could we please follow the process that we've outlined, which is that you'll come to us for the quotation. If you disagree with the quotation, we'll have a discussion about that. But at, at the very least, please, um, because I manage this environment and I bake this cake, please stop making decisions that affect our engagement. Please stop doing that, right? I'm direct about it. Have Good. a million dollars in your back pocket. Be willing to walk away. Have you been looking for a way to stay focused on your goals and grow your MSP? Accountability groups from Rocket MSP can help. We offer weekly accountability sessions that meet online with a group of your peers. Your success begins with accountability. Go to www.rocketmsp.io to join your accountability group today.